Sebastian Gorka isn't just against anti-Semitism. Sebastian Gorka finds anti-Semitism abhorrent. And so this idea that the Lincoln Project is going to make this association between Sebastian Gorka and, and anti-Semitism, f*** right off, okay? F*** you, you're a bunch of sh heads. Honestly, I, I don't like swearing, okay? And I apologize to my listeners out there, but I am f***ing pissed off. F*** you, Lincoln Project, you're a bunch of f***ing sh heads. Go to hell and die. I do not like those people. <laughs> I am pissed off. Mr. Reagan. All right, so many of you have probably heard about the Virginia governor's race. This is between Glenn Youngkin and Terry McCullough. Or McCullough. I don't know how to pronounce this idiot's name. Anyway, needless to say, Terry McCullough is the Democrat and Glenn Youngkin is the Republican. Now, Glenn Youngkin is popular right now because he opposes critical race theory and he is an advocate for parents who want to have a voice in the classroom. They want to have a voice in the school. They want to be able to go to these school board meetings and express their concerns, complain to the school board, and try to get their students to be taught traditional American history, traditional lessons like math and science and the normal stuff you'd normally be taught. But of course, the left wants to teach critical race theory and they want to silence anybody who opposes that objective. Now, with regard to our kids in schools, we are called to love everyone, to love everyone. And we must demand that they include parents in this dialogue. What we've seen over the course of the last 20 months is our school systems refusing to engage with parents. In fact, in Fairfax County this past week, we watched parents so upset because there was such explicit, sexually explicit material in the library they had never seen. It was shocking. And in fact, you vetoed the bill that would have informed parents that they were there. You believe school systems should tell children what to do. I believe parents should be in charge of their okay. kids' education. Mr. McCullough, 30 seconds. Now, instead of Terry McCullough coming out and saying, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Actually, you're right. We should not be abusing our parents. We should not be closing the doors to them and uh, muzzling them and silencing them and keeping them out of the classroom. Instead of saying, oh, we should welcome our parents, we should welcome their input, there should be some kind of synergy between the school boards and the parents to try to figure out what's the most appropriate way to deal with these students and to teach them, you know, these important lessons. No, instead, Terry McCullough has come out and said, uh, no, the, the parents get no say in the education. The state is going to now control the minds of your children, and you get no say in it. And they've, all right, I looked up the exact quote here. McCullough has actually stated, I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually take books out and make their own decisions. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. But I'm not going to let parents come into schools bill. and actually you take books out and make their own decisions. You vetoed it. So... Yeah, I, parents, stop the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Many people believe that this is what has tanked McCullough's campaign because this guy, his poll numbers have just dive bombed. He used to be very popular. He's the former governor. People thought that this guy was a shoe in. Virginia is a left leaning state. Biden won this state easily. And I don't know how great Glenn Youngkin is. I haven't really looked into him, but for sure he's going to be a hell of a lot better than McCullough. He's going to be hell of a lot better than anybody who says that parents have no role in the schools whatsoever. You shouldn't, pa parents should have no say in their students' education. I mean, like, what? I mean, this guy is so out of touch. I mean, he's so left wing. Okay, so obviously the poll numbers have shifted. Obviously, these guys are on the ropes. They know it. So they recently brought in Barack Obama to try to sell McCullough for the people. He tried to come out and pitch, bring it in the big guns, right? Bring it in Barack Obama. Now, it was kind of a big deal. I, I don't think Barack Obama comes and campaigns for every single governor out there. But the reason that it's so important to the Democrats right now is that they think that this is an indication of how the country's going. If Virginia keeps McCullough in, it indicates that the country is still left enough that when we come up to the midterms, when we come up to 2024, that, you know, Democrats have a chance of sustaining their majorities in Congress, have, you know, the potential to sustain the presidency. Uh, sustain? That's not the right word. Retain. Retain is the word. <laughs> Mino speak English so good. So anyway, they want to retain the presidency. They want to retain Congress. And they think that this is an indication, right? This is the canary in the coal mine. Uh, unfortunately, Having to bring in Barack Obama, having to bring in Biden, having to bring in all these people to stump for McCullough 
already indicates that they've lost. It already indicates that they've lost public support, right? We know they don't have public support. So this canary in the coal mine thing, it, it, that part is over. All right, you guys have already lost. If you were looking at this campaign as an indication of the way the country's going, you already have your indication. The fact that you needed to bring in all these other people to try to stump for McCullough, that to me, that's an indication that you've lost. So what's the point? I mean, okay, granted, it's an important thing to make sure that you keep your people in power because that's what you guys care about, obviously. But in terms of an indicator, no, you've lost already there. I mean, they're definitely on the wrong side of that issue, the role of parents in school. They are totally on the wrong side of that issue. They're on the wrong side of the issue with CRT, critical race theory. They're on the wrong side of that issue as well. I mean, everybody knows that. It's bizarre that they're still really pushing that stuff, still really defending it. I mean, you'd think that they'd take a lighter touch to that knowing that it's so unpopular, but whatever, they're all in. But why am I so pissed off? Why am I so pissed off? I'm pissed off because they've gone after my friend. They've gone after my good friend, Sebastian Gorka. They've called Sebastian Gorka an anti-Semite, right? They've tried to indicate that he's somehow involved with uh, nationalists who are white. (laughs) This is absolutely reprehensible. Sebastian Gorka, not only is he not anti-Semitic, not only is he not a nationalist who is white, but he is absolutely against anti-Semitism in a very strong way. Again, I am pissed about this, but we're going to get into the details in one moment. First, I have to sell you something. Now, you've heard of inflation. You've probably heard of stagflation, but have you heard of shrinkflation? Yeah, shrinkflation. That is actually a thing. Now, this is where your candy bar or your burger or your orange juice gets smaller, but the price stays the same. It's sometimes difficult to notice these things because the packaging often remains the same size. But this happens all the time. It's happening everywhere right now. But the government insists that inflation is under control and that it's just temporary. But what do you think? Do you trust that this administration has anything under control? Exactly. But you know what? Noble Gold is ahead of the game here. They know that with a precious metals IRA, you can hedge against these rising prices that you can retire without worrying about it. You'll keep up with the inflation that the folks in Washington are trying to pretend doesn't exist. And this month, to thank you and to get your precious metals project off to a flying start, Noble Gold is giving away this five ounce solid silver America the Beautiful bullion coin with every qualifying IRA and 401 rollover. This one is the Idaho Wilderness. Fantastic company, and in fact, Somebody wrote in the comments the other day, they wrote, uh, your Noble Gold advertisements are great. I invested with them and he's very happy. So that's great. And if you want to invest too, go to noblegoldinvestments.com or call them at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. Now, many of you have heard of the whole Charlottesville reenactment. The disgraced Lincoln Project, which has spent more than a quarter of a million dollars on anti-Yunkin efforts, is now admitting that it orchestrated this stunt sending this group to stand outside a Yunkin bus to pose as white supremacists with tiki torches. McCall's team quickly pounced on his rival, writing in a now deleted tweet, the Unite the Right rally was one of the darkest days in the Commonwealth's history. This is who Glenn Yunkin's supporters are. Hey, this is a weird thing, guys. Okay, so this is from the Lincoln Project, right? The Lincoln Project is a so-called Never Trumper Republican organization. This is not a Republican organization. Okay, I'm sorry. This is like a deep state establishment organization. They are not, they're in no way Republican. These are the most despicable human beings on the planet. Now, these guys fell out of relevance recently because of accusations of, um, how do I say this without the algorithm killing me? The philia of pedo having an affection for children in a very inappropriate way. I'm looking at an article here from the Washington Times. The prominent Never Trump operation was rocked by revelations that the co-founder of the group, John Weaver, sexually harassed at least 21 men. Two teenage boys also accused Mr. Weaver of sexual harassment, and they found text messages to, I, I think, to an underage boy. This, was, this, this news broke last year, I think, or maybe it was earlier this year, February 2021, it looks like. Now, George Conway, who is an absolute piece of garbage degenerate, he came out and said, an investigation is needed for this. An investigation is needed. However, uh, and I will quote here from the Washington Times, the Washington Times writes, the revelation expanded to suspected financial wrongdoing and accusations that Lincoln Project leaders knew of Mr. Weaver's conduct and they covered it up. Okay, so this is not just this Weaver guy. 
This is basically everybody at the Lincoln Project at the upper echelon, including George Conway. So this whole, like, righteous indignation, oh, we need an investigation immediately. Give me a break, George Conway. F you. You are guilty by association. The whole Lincoln Project is BS. There's nothing Republican about it, okay? The fact they even use the name Lincoln is a disgrace, all right? That is a dishonorable use. You are dishonoring the name of Lincoln, okay? I use the name Mr. Reagan, and I worry sometimes that I am not honoring the legacy of Ronald Reagan. I mean, the reason that I chose that name is to honor Ronald Reagan. He was a great man, okay? And I know that probably if he were alive today, we might disagree on an issue or two, but I try to keep in the traditional of Ronald Reagan, right? I, I am a true conservative, and, and the reason that I chose that name is to not only to honor Ronald Reagan, but to make it explicitly clear I am a conservative. That's the channel I started, and that's how I want people to see me. This Lincoln Project, they've just taken the name of Abraham Lincoln, they, and they have, I mean, they're covering up this stuff. I mean, I have to, I can't say it for the algorithm, but you know, the philia of pedo, let's call it. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is this is not honoring Abraham Lincoln. This is dishonoring Abraham Lincoln. But anyway, they, so how are they involved in the uh, the uh, Virginia governor's race? <laughs> a couple of ways. But the the first thing, which you guys may have seen you know, on Twitter or you might have seen in the news, they they tried to recreate this Charlottesville thing. They they hired a bunch of actors. They brought in some interns or so, I don't know who they got. A bunch of guys and they brought them in and they said, go stand outside. Glenn Youngkin's tour bus or campaign bus and hold tiki torches, right? And dress in like a, a nice white shirts and pretend that you are supremacists who are white. Pretend that you are nationalists who are white. Stand out there and we're good. And then they started to tweet like these are Glenn Youngkin supporters, but they weren't real Glenn Youngkin supporters at all. They, they were their own operatives, right? They had sent them out there. This is a pretty standard thing for the left now, right? This is what they call a false flag, like January 6th, right? You just pretend that there are all of these activists, there are all these crazy conservatives, but in reality, it's your own side pretending. Now, what was really funny is that one of the guys was black, and I put out a tweet in which I said, uh, another black actor taking a white actor's job. <laughs> what else did I write? I also wrote, uh, I also wrote, I found the black face of white supremacy. Larry Elder is off the hook. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was ridiculous. I, I, I mean, I don't even understand. I mean, I guess they knew that they were going to get figured out pretty quickly. And so it didn't matter to them. But why would you hire a black guy to pretend to be a supremacist, a supremacist who is white and put him outside Glenn Youngkin's bus, tour bus? I mean, even, even a, an independent or a, a vaguely reasonably minded leftist is going to look at that and go, why is there a black guy there? <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. But I guess they weren't really thinking. They just, I mean, honestly, I feel like this is like a false flag developed by a 13 year old. If you go to a, a middle school and you say, hey, kid, I want you to develop a false flag operation for us. What do you think? This is the kind of crap they'd come up with. I mean, it's just so, I mean, points for creativity, but not for professionalism. That That is a big fail on many levels. All right, so the Lincoln Project sets up this BS stunt, which, because it's a hoax, right, because it's a hoax, it's just going to make McAuliffe look bad. It's just going to make Youngkin look like a victim. I mean, you're, you're screwing yourselves. I don't think... I think what they're in their head, what they were thinking is, oh, we'll get enough people to think that this is real just long enough to convince them to make this association now and it doesn't it doesn't have to be a hoax that is that people are convinced by forever. It just has to be a hoax that people are convinced by for a few days. And the problem is that this all unraveled like the same day that it happened. But then they posted something else. They posted a video about Sebastian Gorka of all people. Okay. And this this pisses me off. Who is the real Glenn Youngkin? It's not the one behind the slick TV ads and mailers. The real Yunkin begged to go on the radio show of Seb Gorka, one of Donald Trump's most extreme supporters. Gorka said white supremacists weren't the problem just days before Charlottesville. They just literally came down the street to f***ing hit us just now. And Glenn Youngkin wants his support. Gorka backs radical anti-Semitic groups, and Glenn Youngkin went on his radio show. Sebastian, thanks for having me. Gorka proudly wore a Nazi militia group's medal, and Glenn Youngkin kissed his ass. Well, this is not the Virginia that we all know. On Seb Gorka's radio show, he promised he'll impose the Trump agenda on Virginia. Youngkin knows exactly 
exactly who Gorka is and what he stands for. Hate, division, neo-Nazis and white supremacists, the Trump agenda. Now, Virginia knows it too. Thank you, Glenn Youngkin. The Lincoln Project paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. All right, so let me just say this. They're trying to associate Sebastian Gorka with anti-Semitism, with supremacy that is white, or nationalism that is white, or whatever. Okay, I've actually watched Sebastian Gorka's show specifically where he's talking about Nick Fuentes. Okay, Nick Fuentes is a conservative podcaster, YouTuber, whatever you want to call him, who many people believe that he's anti-Semitic. He's been accused of being anti-Semitic. He, he states that he's not, but he is definitely against interracial marriage, um, which is something I actually confronted him about when we were at CPAC a couple years back, and he didn't really have a good response. He was just like, meh, I just don't think it's a good idea. And I'm like, all right, whatever, fair enough. I mean, I, mean, I don't understand why anybody would think that in America, but okay, whatever each to his own. But here's the thing. Nick Fuentes made a pretty revolting joke, or he read a pretty revolting joke, or a comparison or an analysis about Jewish people enduring the Holocaust on his show. And I believe the analysis was trying to count how many people died in the Holocaust, and somebody had equated the number of people that were obviously, you know, incinerated. They incinerated a lot of Jews in uh, in World War II. And, and somebody was trying to make a calculation using cookies, like how many cookies could you cook in the amount of time that Jews were being incinerated in Nazi Germany. And that making that kind of a comparison is pretty revolting, right? So Nick Fuentes read, read this comment on his channel and was kind of laughing about it and stuff. And naturally, Sebastian Gorka was absolutely disgusted. Right. Here's Sebastian Gorka's reaction to this. Was on them, and they're not totally You're a disgusting secure. human and being, up. Nick Fuentes. You think you can cover up with your funny joke about cookies, six million human beings being exterminated? All decent human beings, all true Americans reject you, and all your cultish followers who rang into this show today who I've dismissed because they're so pathetic living in their mother's basement. You'll never win, whether you're a communist or a fascist, and they all come from the left. That's why it was called the Nationalist Socialist Workers' Party of Germany. We're not going to let you in. Your beliefs are repugnant. You are pond scum on the civilization that is Judeo-Christian culture. This is a message for all of you. As long as we breathe, as long as people who've seen, who are descended from those who suffered under fascism and communism have a heartbeat. We reject you and we'll never let you in. You're a grifter and you're an anti-Semite and you're un-American. I'm Sebastian Gorka. This is America First on the Salem Radio Network. That was Nick J. Fuentes using a cookie analogy that he called an analogy, saying it was impossible that six million Jews were killed in the Holocaust. I find that reprehensible and disgusting. I am disgusted. I saw this video from Nick Fuentes just before coming on the show, and the responses to my tweet asking, how is this person, a verified Twitter user with a blue check mark, the responses. I knew anti Semitism is real. I realized Europe has a real problem with it because I saw it when I lived there. But the tweets I have seen today of Americans supporting Nick J. Fuentes in his anti Semitic denial of the Holocaust are chilling. They have disturbed me like very little since that little girl came up to me, that 19-year-old snowflake at my daughter's college graduation in May and called me a Nazi and a fascist because I worked for Donald Trump when my parents suffered under Nazism as children. And every caller who comes on today, you will be dealt with likewise if you're an anti-Semite and a denier of the Holocaust. Are we clear? Because I don't care who you are, you have a right under the First Amendment to speak the way you do, but I have a right to call you scum, which is what you are, every single Holocaust denier. So, so Sebastian Gorka isn't just against anti-Semitism. 
He's like emotionally affected by anti-Semitism. Sebastian Gorka finds anti-Semitism abhorrent, okay? And so this idea that the Lincoln Project is going to make this association between Sebastian Gorka and, and anti-Semitism, f*** right off, okay? F*** you, you're a bunch of shitheads. Honestly, I, I don't like swearing, okay? And I apologize to my listeners out there, but I am f***ing pissed off. F*** you, Lincoln Project, you're a bunch of f***ing shitheads. Go to hell and die. I do not like those people. <laughs> Sebastian Gorka is not an anti-Semite. Not only that, he is not, he's not a nationalist of whiteness. He's not a supremacist of whiteness. He's got none of those characteristics that they labeled him in that video. And why did they do that? Did they do that because they hate Gorka? I mean, I'm sure they do, but no. They just chose somebody that they saw that Glenn Youngkin had interviewed with. And they said, okay, he used to work for Trump, therefore... Sebastian Gorka is tainted with Trumpness, and therefore Glenn Youngkin is tainted with Trumpness via Sebastian Gorka, and they just use Sebastian Gorka as cannon fodder. Sebastian Gorka is collateral damage here. They're not going after Sebastian Gorka. They're going after Youngkin. They're just using Gorka, and they're lying about him in order to do that. And I texted him, and I said, did you see this? He said, yeah, I saw it. And I go, you need to sue them. And he said, I can't. I've already talked to a lawyer. I said, why? He said, I'm a public figure. Anybody can say whatever they want about me, and I can't do anything about it. I have to prove that they knew what they were saying was a lie, and that's almost impossible to do. So it's obvious. It's obvious that they knew they were lying. Of course they knew they were lying. If you did even the most remote, you know, low-level research on Sebastian Gorka, you would know that he's not anti-Semitic. You would know that he has none of those qualities that they were presenting in that video, and yet they still lied about him. And yet, we can't do anything about it legally, which is really sad. But I did tell him this. I said, you know what? I should congratulate you. And I have to modify this for the algorithm. But uh, I said, you know when the files of pedo are targeting you, that you got to be doing something right. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for me. And remember, when the files of pedo are targeting you, you know you're doing something right. Good night. You know, someone very profoundly once said that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. What is fascism? Fascism is private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says, less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny.